the Lord has something for you. If I was to walk on my soul, I was just standing in his presence. In the name of Jesus, we wake up the living way. Begin to move in our, our lives. As we stand in your presence, we acknowledge that we are under your supernatural power. There is anybody here who is sick. The Bible says when they met, the power of God was present to heal. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, touch these bodies. Any sickness that is hiding anywhere in their bodies, by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every sickness, we command you out of these bodies. Because these are the temples of the Holy Spirit. They cannot share this temple with you. And so we speak to you, cancer, in Jesus' name, be killed in these bodies, in the name of Jesus. Migraine, in the name of Jesus, be destroyed. In this sickness that has found itself into our bodies, we decree and declare that they are unwanted. And what do we do with unwanted entities? We cast them out. And therefore, in the name of Jesus, we cast out any sickness from these bodies. In Jesus' name. Now receive the grace of God. The grace to receive the word of God and to walk with it. Even as the word of God is about to come, in Jesus' name, may your mind be receptive. May your hearts be prepared. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Be seated. Hallelujah. There's a song. Hallelujah. Today the Lord is asking me to talk to you about what I have titled my eternal reward. Hallelujah. As sorry I am me be. What am I going to get from it? What is my reward for having to come to this place every Sunday? For having to live a godly life? Last week we were talking about the grace to work. We were talking about the talents that the master gave us talent to put to work. And we are saying that in this church, that talent or those talents must be in operation in this church. And so as a member, pastor expects me to put my talent to work. Pastor, what am I going to get from this? Part of your talents or the grace that has been given you, that you have to put to work in the house of God, is your resources. Why do I have to spend in the kingdom? What am I going to get? And so today, the Lord is asking me to talk to you about my eternal rewards. Hallelujah. Now, hear what Jesus said. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Behold, I am coming quickly. 
and my reward is with me. To render to every man according to what he has done. Jesus is saying it. Mr. Ando, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everybody what he has done. Hallelujah. The main reward we are all looking for is that we will be taken to heaven. God is taking us to heaven. For what? Two rewards I'm talking about this morning. The crown of righteousness and the beamer seat rewards. The crown of righteousness and the beamer seat rewards. The crown of righteousness according to let's listen to Paul. In Timothy 1 verse 4 First Timothy actually 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 to 7 I have fought the good fight I have finished the race I have kept the faith Now there is store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge will award me on that day and not only me but also to all who long for his appearing. I have fought. Today we're talking about purity. Sometimes it's a fight. You have to train your body to live a pure life. Oh yeah, it is a decision that you take. You know, the Bible talks about Moses. In Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says that Moses, let, let's read that part again. Hebrews 11, Moses, by faith, Moses, when he had come of age, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be retreated along with the people of God, rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasure of sin. Moses, at the time, Moses was adopted by Pharaoh's own daughter in Egypt and had everything at his benefits. Moses had all the things you could think about in Egypt. But attached to those things were pleasures of sin. And so Moses looked at himself as an Israelite with all this around him. And further, no, no, I don't belong here. So he made a choice, a hard choice, and joined the Israelites to suffer. And hear what the Bible says. He says that Bible says that he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Now, why? He said he regarded the disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Hello? He was looking ahead to his what? Reward. Because of the reward, he forsake or forsook the treasures of Egypt and aligned himself with the people of Israel. Hello? I don't know what you see in America. Oh, yes. You have to make a conscious decision. This is the land of opportunities. Everything is here. Maybe you live by yourself. Nobody watches you when you go out. But you have to make a conscious effort like Moses did. Looking at the reward that you have been promised. 
Bible says that he forsook the pleasures of sin. And it was everywhere. In Egypt, he was the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He had everything. But he was looking at the eternal world. You know what, what Paul said? Paul said that for our light, light, light suffering, or our light struggle, the things that we are asking you to forsake, Paul considered them light. He said it's working for us. It's working for us eternal glory that cannot be compared to. Hallelujah. Living for the reward that is about to come. Bible says, without holiness, no one can see God. Purity was the message for our Sunday school class today. Everything in this world, the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life, we have to let that go. Because of the reward. And what do we get? The Bible says we get what? The crown of what? Righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have that aspect to fight for. And you also have the desire to promote the kingdom. So whilst you are walking in purity and in righteousness, God is also asking you to put to work your talents at his service. Jesus said that go into the world and make disciples. Oh, go in and make disciples. When he came out, the instruction he gave to the church, go in and make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is our spiritual responsibility. In fact, it's supposed to be the main focus of the church. We come in and we go, we bring in. That is our focus. For what reward? We are not supposed to come every week, every hour, the same like that. That simply means that it's either the job that Jesus gave us, we have just let it go, or we are being selfish. We all want to go to heaven and watch others suffer. Do you know what happened? The Bible says that when, when the rich man saw Lazarus, when Lazarus saw the rich man in hell, he had so much compassion. You will go to heaven and see your best friend in hell and you will not be able to enjoy your heaven. Oh yeah. The rich man was in hell suffering and Lazarus was in heaven. Lazarus could not enjoy his heaven. You know what he told God? Huh? Can... Oh God, have mercy. He wanted to help the rich man. But he was too late. Then the rich man called out and told God, well, if you can't help me, because where I am is too late, can you send people to the world to talk to those friends, family members of mine who are there. Because they don't know what is going on. Look at the number of people on the streets. On Sundays. If you go to England, it's worse. Other Chelsea fans, go and see. People are going with their children. They are going to watch football. On Sundays. And I've all been saying it's so unfortunate that when certain people die, they bring them to church. When, when, once you are dead, go, what is the value of you to the church? It's only when they die, they send them to church. Because there's that misconception that if somebody can pray you, a dead person, to go to heaven, when you didn't live your life for God. No. It doesn't work that way. I'm talking about your reward. Jesus said, I'm coming quickly. I want to make sure that the 
talents I gave you. When I come, when Jesus comes, what reward are you going to get? Hallelujah. I am coming quickly. I am coming quickly. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things that were in body. You now appear. And that is what we call the Bema seat judgment. The Bema seat, the Bema, the judgment seat in Greek is called Bema, so it's not any big deal. So the judgment seat, this one is not for believers, it's for Christians. Hello? You will be asked when you became a Christian, how, how did you do it? How many disciples were you able to make? Did you hear that the, 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 your, the Lord told you, go into the world and make disciples? Did, were you aware of that? Maybe the question will come to you. Oh, yeah, I was. At least if you were not, I'm telling you right now. Hello? Yeah. How many of them were you able to do? Then you'll be standing there looking at the church. Oh, God, you know I had a job. Every Sunday, you know, my supervisor will not even let me come to work on Sunday. They will always schedule me on Sunday. Me in particular. Oh yeah, the child will be asking you. Okay, so what about the other days? You will be asking the church will sit on the seat. And the Bible said they will judge you according to what you did whilst you were on earth. In the body, meaning when you were a human being right now, as you sit in this body, hallelujah, amen. And so, you know, my good friend Paul always has something to tell us. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 8. But even before that. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 29. Colossians 1, 29. Paul, on seeing the reward ahead, said, And for this purpose, I also labor, striving according to his power, which mightily works within me. When I got to know that this is the reward, this is how I'm going to be questioned when I appear before the master. Oh, I labor. I labor. The word labor should be understood. Some of you know labor. Women know labor more than men because you have all labored before. Hello? Except who? Except the kitchen. Labor is to give birth. Eh? When you are giving birth, you live by Christian. I said, preach you Christian. I'm sorry. And my little Adam. You know how to labor. You work to give birth to something important. You got to work at it. It's not easy. It's not going to be easy. The person doesn't believe in God. And you are trying to tell him about God. You think it's going to be easy, but you have to do your best. Paul said, I live it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's not easy in America to present Christ. That is the reason why you have to do extra. Consistency. Not giving up easily. You go first time, second time, third time. Hallelujah. Now let's conclude the issue right now. Let's conclude it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. The conclusion. Hallelujah. Amen. How do we conclude? Hear Paul to the Corinthians. Therefore, my 
dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Stand firm. That is the first. Because if you don't stand firm, what could be a Sunday when my dear who have next week, next two weeks? You need to stand firm. The wind blowing back and forth. The pressure of the moment. The pressure of your job. The pressure of your friends. Your, the pressure of your siblings. Sometimes it will make you compromise the principle you believe in. So Paul is saying, stand firm. Oh, stand firm on this living words of service of God. Today, this. Tomorrow, that. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Nothing. Oh, yeah. Let nothing move you. Stay strong. Stay strong with the vision. We want to, we want to raise a mighty aging church in the area. Stand firm on that. Let nothing move you from that vision. Now, says, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Always, not sometimes. Always give yourself fully. It's not wholly or partially. Yes, no make up you in a midma anyhow. No. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Why? Because your labor in the Lord will not be in vain. Hallelujah. Amen. The master is coming with me. He is coming with his reward. Let's be on our feet. Me ye juma me rati Midi mi muna mi nara Me ye nami me juma Ame nani sanchira Se ofre mi Bibiara Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
I want you to pray. Just pray, pray, pray. In the name of Jesus. That the Lord will grant you the grace to do the little you can. In the name of Jesus. Yes, we would you my Anywhere you are weak, may God's strength come there in Jesus' name. 